Can you hear me? OK. Hello. Thanks for coming to my talk. My name is Andriy Saldatenko. I am from, I'm Gopher from Ukraine. And I'm going to invite you today to my to journey about debuggers and debugging in Go. And let's start. Development is hard. Software development requires actual understanding and logic and some concentration what we are doing wrong or what we are doing right. And usually we have a problem. We can say, my code has no errors, but it does not work. And software development has one fundamental dif difficulty. There are lots of factors and context switching. And there are many different books and official docs, but there is uh, no enough information how to debug your program. And that's why I have a question to audience. And how can I debug my program? Any ideas? Please raise your hand. Print. 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 It's, <laughs> yeah. Print. It's one of the most, yeah. What? Just print. And still, by the way, debugging where prints is like, we call it tracing. And debugging where debugger, we call uh, interactive debugging. And still, it's my face when I'm coding, and it's my face when I'm debugging. Anyway, it's still hard. And st sometimes I feel I spend more time for debugging than for at least coding. And, and other ideas how I can debug my program? Yeah? Sorry? Testing. No? What, what else? Testing. No. <laughs> it's something between uh, Prince and Delph. In between, we are playground. You can just copy your program and run it and see results. But yeah, it's not about debugging. It's just, I'm kidding. Uh, any other ideas? I usually, pre yeah, I have one. And yeah, I usually ask myself line by line how it's evaluated. And yeah, but if we switch to more serious stuff, yeah, we can use debuggers. and. Thanks, Derek. Had a great talk about Delph. Yeah, we have Delph. And another one, we have old school GDB. And I have an interesting fact for you that Go version prior 1.0 included debugger Ogle. Who knows this? Please raise your hand. Yeah, it's like few people. Yeah. And it's fun. You can run Go, Ogle, it's run your like Google. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not kidding. Yeah, it's, it's serious. There are a few commits you can find still in repository that like remove or just some replacement of it. And very important that uh, debuggers works with Go right now because of Dwarf. Dwarf is a format for which supports source level debugging and it's language agnostic. And because when we compile your Go binary, we can connect to and run it with any debuggers. And for, for production, usually we use, like, we can disable it or enable if we need to see more information. And uh, today, I think everybody knows Delph. And I'm, not am, and I'm not going to show you how to use it and blah, blah, blah. But I will show you some tips which I use day to day. And maybe it helps you. OK. Usually, we develop uh, CLI tools in Go. And how to debug it, especially with Delph, if CLI tool also accepts some uh, inputs. And you can do this. You can just type double slash and arcs. And it will uh, add these arcs to your uh, debugger, uh, to your CLI command. That's how you can debug it and see how it goes. Uh, second variant is debug specific unit test. It's also very easy, and I like API which Delph provides. It's absolutely mirror what Go test provides. You can just run Go test and test name, and same you can do with Delph, just with double slashes. It's 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 really awesome. Okay, uh, yeah, it's small example. If you run it, you will see that debugger stops on first line of the test, and you can uh, jump using next step, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Nothing interesting. Uh, yeah, also you can set breakpoint. If you set breakpoint, we can do it by uh, function name. Also, I don't have it in my slides, but you can use some uh, shortcuts of Delph, like funks. You can find 
in, it will print all functions, and you can use regular, uh, some kind of wildcards to find your function and then debug it. More advanced stuff, it's my favorite one, is conditional breakpoint. Sometimes you debug loops, especially reading huge file or whatever. And if you need to dig into your function, usually you click next, next, next so many times as you have long uh, loop. But you can do this. You can debug your program. And if you set breakpoint with name, then you can, uh, on the next line, you can say conditional breakpoint. And if you run continue, you will stop on the line where this condition true which cool, and no need to click next, 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 so many times. Uh, also, not very common feature, but sometimes it's very useful. You can set variable if you debug your function, and you decided, oh, what, what, what happens if uh, parameters will be A equal 10, and you can use set, and it will be 10. Uh, also, there are nice feature like call function, <laughs> Uh, which exists since Go 1.13, probably, not sure, 100%. But there are two PRs, one to runtime and one to Delph. Thanks again for team of Delph who did it and for Go. And yeah, you can call a function and you can debug it, but there are lots of limitations of this functionality. Be accurate. Uh, yeah, it's example you can, for instance, if you're in Delph session, you can call uh, your function, and you will see, yeah, but it's mistake, it should be not dummy, it should be T. Okay. And also, it's supported in Goland. Uh, yeah, it's by design, it's okay. It's GIF, yeah, uh, we call it function, uh, we call it evaluate, it's just called function, and you can see results, which if you prefer visual debuggers, like uh, Goland or VS Code, yeah. It, it will use absolutely the same feature. Next, next tip, not about Delph, but also very useful. Sometimes you, we have a nice package, F FMT, and it does lots of great stuff for us, but there are lots of limitations of performance, and if you need pretty print your struct, you can use go, I'm not sure what the pronunciation of it, and the idea is like you can uh, let me show. Yeah, this is FMT print, and if you need some more details just for debugging, you can uh, print it. I was wondering if we integrate it in Delph. will be very nice when you run P. It just run this. will be cool. It's idea, probably. Yeah. If you have idea, please implement it. I know. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, next part of my topic is I will try to show you a small demo. It's about more, like every day we use containers, Kubernetes, all this stuff, and sometimes it's tricky to debug it. And usually you have this, you can, like Docker file, very simple, with Go, you copy source code, and I have this one with just, additionally I install Delph, not for production, and yeah, I build it and run it, uh, the idea to run Bash, and maybe inside Docker to run my debugger, but yeah, we can't launch a process, and uh, probably you know how to fix it. Because it's Docker, we have some app arm, which Linux security model, which restrict you to, uh, restrict operating system to run uh, for threats. And if you know, uh, Chris yesterday showed a lot about this, but we need to add security capacity, just like enable ptrace and put this one, arm, and yeah, now you can, inside your Docker, uh, if you run, because we run bash, we, we can run our command, uh, and we can, we can go to debugger, which awesome, because yeah, uh, lots of stuff, uh, not like on your machine, but not like on production. Okay, but this is easy one, but what about remote debugging for containers? And I have another example, more tricky, let's say you have web application and it, it de uh, deployed to some Kubernetes, and yeah, you can spin up your pod and connect somehow, but uh, I have this one for debugging needs. I just add extra line, which run at the same time headless Delph uh, server, 
and if you know Delphi's client server application, and then I can build it and run it, and I have a demo. I will try to, maybe I can do it. Nice. Yeah, it's tricky, I know. Maybe this idea will work. Okay. Nice. Hey. Okay. And I have like my start is H. We just do what we described. I pre-compiled and pre-built Docker to not waste your time. And from one side, we run this uh, web application on port 8080, and at the same time, we run uh, headless uh, Delph part. And from another side, we can connect to it, which really awesome, and uh, we can set breakpoint on main. And as you can see, we connect, and yeah, we can, uh, we can see, and as you can see on my screen, we see source code, but we connect it to container, and we can jump, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, yeah, that's the idea. I think you can catch it. Okay, let's continue with slides. Okay. And to show you that it works, you need to do some trick, you need them some mapping between source code because uh, we are not showing exact source code from container. We just map, from my understanding, we map uh, dwarf data in Delph and to your source code. Uh, and that's why we need to configure Delph, just to show where your source code locally and where your like, application deployed, and it works. Also, there are lots of tips you can configure Delph which usually also not very common for everybody. Like you can see current config list, you can uh, set something, sometimes you can change the length of string, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, it's just copy of my demo. Okay, second part is GDB, like one of the old school. You can say why we have Delph, but sometimes we have this ability and I would like to show you what we can do. Okay, first part is GDB issues on O6. Yeah, if you try to run it, you will see this. It's not code signed. There are some permission on Darwin fixes. You can go to this link and fix. Okay, uh, if you use High Sierra, you need to downgrade your, uh, like, yeah, you, do, you need to downgrade GDB to version 8, and et cetera, et cetera. And then uh, GDB works, and you can, yeah, you can debug it. And uh, again, it doesn't work. And it, at this time, I feel like, okay, let's return back to Delft, yeah. But now I have more, more and more like time to investigate what's wrong. And okay, let's stop it and see what's what's wrong and think a little bit. And GDB doesn't. Like since version, not sure which, but go build uh, compressed dwarf information to reduce size, and GDP doesn't understand it, and that's why you need to rebuild with compressed dwarf false, and yeah, it will work, and you can, yeah, and and you can, yeah, then you need to uh, source some pretty print, and I will show you one trick. If you go and find run, uh, yeah, let me, yeah. Uh, sorry, yeah, this one. If, if you have some binary, you can, using strings and grep, you can find that inside each Go binary, we have a Python file, which helps us to do some interactive tips for GDB, and yeah. It's like Python inside every Go binary. Nice, nice. Ah. Why not? Yeah, we just bring it. Uh, yeah, and finally it works. You can step 
It looks not so fancy as Delft, but still you can debug, you can set breakpoints, and if you're familiar with GDB, yeah. Uh, okay. Conclusion about GDB. Why you really need it? Yeah, it doesn't understand Go programs well. It, it does some, uh, but some situation when I use it, you can uh, check your memory, and uh, the most important, you can debug C Go programs using GDB. And it's really nice if you, as in previous talk, like if you have some C Go, yeah, it can help you to understand the issue, and it's tricky to do with Delph. Also, you can, uh, in, in some, I don't know, if you, if you want to learn how go uh, put some data to memory, you also can just investigate it with, with, with GDB. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, debugging is fun and always useful. And why I use console debugger rather than UI? Because sometimes it's faster. And as you can see with Goland, when we run uh, UI debugger, usually we uh, pre, -pre like pre-render all variables, which sometimes it's slow. And if you run, if you debug some program with visual debugger, which uh, I don't know has huge struct with lots of lots of attributes, it can be slower. And console debugger is much faster because you just show what you really need. Uh, and uh, yeah, future reading is still like not too many information. You can uh, check these slides. I think it's by direct slides about architecture of Delph. You can check Dwarf specification. You can read docs on golang.org. And yeah, documentation help and yeah. Source code of Go is one of the best source of truth. And thank you. Uh, I work remotely. I need to say this slide because uh, this company helps me to bring here to first time at Fosdem. If you if you like work remotely from any part of of the world, yeah, feel free. Send me a message. I will let you know how to apply. Slides you can find using this uh, code or link in Bitly. Uh, Thank you for your attention and slides again. Great, so I'm gonna move out for the pictures. Uh, so any questions? No, yes. Oh, nice. Uh, what about uh, debugging uh, in case of many Go subroutines? Sorry, like, can, can, you, can you? When you spawn many Go routines, uh, yes. do these debuggers work at all? Uh, there are some tips uh, in Delph and in GDB. You can you can run Go routines and see how many running Go routines and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But I highly recommend you to switch your mind and your program to one thread and debug it, like because debugger is more for functional like for functional debugging rather than for concurrency. And for concurrency, you need to return to prints, I think, <laughs> or for loggers. Yeah. I have a question. You mentioned that uh, with GDB, you're able to debug Sego. Yeah. Have you done that? Uh, I can show you after oh. slides. Oh, yeah. Okay. Same as, have you ever debugged CPython itself? Like from Python, CPython? I've never touched CPython. Yeah, but <laughs> if you need to debug CPython, you do the same trick. Oh, okay. It works, yeah, it works the same way. I mean, it, it's not very like user friendly, but you can. Any more questions? Yes, Carmen. I learned something today. So you said that there's a little bit of Python in each Go binary. So that, is that Python like doing some housekeeping tasks or what Python? Uh, I think if you disable, uh, like, if you uh, like build your binary as a production, it will not include it. It's only when with Dwarf and like with debugger. Uh, metadata, oh. yeah. But it's small. I mean, it's not like it's maybe two screens by. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Any more questions? Three, two, one. Wait. I saw a hand. No. Someone was saying hi. Okay. So uh, thanks everybody and round of applause.